Not me saying, gentle ladies, gentlemen, good morning to everybody. Welcome to the fort and to the castle of Good Hope. This morning I was lucky enough, strangely, picking up this name badge on the outside. And they told me it says Shamir Robertson. So I'm guessing that's my name. I will stick to that for security reasons. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you're in Cape Town right now. And trust me, you can never be too overcautious, okay? But thank you for trusting me to be your guide for the next 40 to 45 minutes. Everybody cool with that? It's like glitch. I started here four to five months ago, so I'm still a trainee guide. So if I do tell lies, I sincerely apologize to everybody, okay? So please, in case of any questions, feel free not to ask any. Are we good? <laughs> okay. For some slim chance, do we have any Afrikaans speaking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm all the way from the United States. Okay, never back. That's around the corner here to get us out of town. So my home language, Cape Flats, Afrikaans. That's a huge catastrophe. So we're doing this way in English. I too would love to understand all the lies I'm about to tell. We cool with that? Yes. Right, so I'm going to start off your tour by me saying, ladies and gentlemen, sadly, South African history, it's really so much misconcepted. I promise you, it's not even funny. And the biggest misconception in South Africa. Patiently now, if you didn't know this ugly brother, you give us a call. I'll pick up the telephone. I'm going to say, hello, good day. My name is Shamir. I'm an African brother. Automatically, what would people have assumed? That I'm a darker tone person, correct? Yeah. But if I had said I'm an Afrikaner, oh, this dude, he never got his African tan going just yet, huh? So I'm going to ask you a question. Cup and mug. Two different sounds on the ear completely. But technically, is that not the same thing? So anybody standing here today, closest source to truth. Why? A whole continent was given that name, Africa. Anybody, please? And you would be well, if you actually don't know, don't feel bad, personally, I'll see it. Okay, counting down the time in the year 246 to 146 BC, there was a city called Carthage, today known as Tunisia. So back then, the Romans wanted to defeat that city to gain control of the whole Mediterranean Sea. And once they would accomplish that, their whole empire would grow. So yes, after three Punic Wars, they defeated the city. They gained control of the whole sea and the empire had spread widely. But out of respect for their biggest enemy inside Carthage was a tribe called Afri. So they took the word Afri and they also joined a Latin Phoenician word referring to a piece of vacant, dusty land called Ica. Joined the two and they got Africa. So what's the point then? Our continent was not given after any race, creed or color. Personally, I believe there's only one race, the human race. Any other race, go on a marathon. Afrikaans, very go. Any questions? Now, I was joking, you allowed to ask questions, please. Am I speaking too fast for anybody? No? Okay, I'll speak faster then. We cool? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dutch East India Company started out in the year 1602. And back then, they were the largest trading company in the world in searches of spices silks and porcelain. Believe it or not, spices back then was considered to be more precious than gold. Why? It was only the kings and queens who could afford it. So, the Dutch people, they got an idiom or a saying that started in the spice route, later stolen by the Afrikaans, speaking people of South Africa. They would say, if something is very, very expensive, they would call it paper D, correct? There we go, in the English, Pepper X Pencil. Where I'm from, we've got another saying going over there, but I'll keep it to myself. It's not a very good saying, okay? But, like any other business, they wanted to make money, make a profit. So what would they do? They would send out ships from the Netherlands, all around the sea coast to India. But gentle ladies and gentlemen, the journey is very long. It took them one whole year to reach India. Now, because of that, sailors got sick. They would die of a disease called scurvy, scurvy. So when a sailor died or got sick, that meant to the business, they're not making enough profit. So that is when they then decided to build a fort or a refreshment station. And they thought then the Cape was going to be the best suited center point between the two stops. So in the year 
1651, the Lord 17 ordered a man called Jan van Riebeek to come to the Cape and build the first fort or refreshment station. But that brother, he only arrived the following year, in the year 1652, to be more accurate, on the 6th of April 1652. If you'd like to know on which day of the week it was, on a Saturday. So when he arrived, he built the first fort, but that one was built in a four pointed star shape, mainly built out of wood and clay. But that one was built on the outside, opposite the road, where the huge grey parking area is. It's called the Grand Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, have you actually noted the Cape's weather conditions? It's like a baby, it's either wet, and if it's not wet, it's windy. So certain sections of that port then would collapse during the rainy period. And after the rainy period, he had to rebuild. But Mr. Jan van Riebeek himself only stayed in the Cape for 10 years, 1652 to 1662. Then he left. He then went to a town called Batavia, today known as Indonesia, in 1663. And he finally got a promotion. He became the secretary of the vice governor. Please allow me to pause on that note. Any questions? Were you told in front not to ask questions? Are we sure? Mm -hmm. One year later, 1664, there became rumors of the war between the British and the Dutch. Then, Van Riebeek, he panicked. He was scared they would attack the Cape as well because back then, whoever was in command of the Cape controlled the spice route and the slave route. So, he only requested that a better, bigger, stronger military port needed to be built. So, in the year 1666, the Lord 17 ordered a man called Zacharias Wagenaar, who was Van Riebeek's successor. But he was not a Dutchman. He was the first and only German person to be in command of the Cape. So they ordered him to start the construction of this Pentagon, meaning it has five corners. Each corner here has been called a bastion, and on each bastion, cannons was placed in case of any attacks. It took them 13 years to build the sport from 1666 to 1679. Today, ladies and gentlemen, this is the oldest surviving colonial building in South Africa. 353 years old. Any questions? Can I beg, please? Oh, to take a bus. South Africa had the Pentagon before the States had theirs. We beat them to it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on the inside we have three museums, right? But the museums we do by ourselves. Why? People want to take some time taking photos, read up some articles, but I'll definitely point it out. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Number one, holding that here, ladies and gentlemen, the balcony area, that is the main museum. It's called the Cat Balcony. Number one, the top floor. That was the governor's sleeping quarters. Now, the middle part. Before Cape Town's new parliament inside the company gardens was built, all the rules, the laws, the announcements of this country was made in that very middle section. Now we can say that used to be the first parliament, but the lower part was only used as storage space. Next, single staircase right here. So this building, it's called the Secunda House. Now, just in case, maybe for somebody who did not know, the word secunda in Dutch language means second. So that means person second in charge. He enters the building, the top floor, that was his sleeping quarters. The middle section was used as multi-functional rooms. But the lower part, that is where all the slaves who only stayed within the walls of the fort had the privilege of sleeping on the floor. Right across the military museum. Ladies and gentlemen, the military museum was the first entrance to this fort. But this old fort was built on the beach. Behind those walls at the back, there's a main street called Strand of Strand Street, meaning beach. When the first official governor of the Cape was the assignment was Simon van der Stel. That brother then decided to move that entrance between the year 1682 and 1684 to the main entrance in France, still being in use, and it was then named after him, the Fundestel entrance. Ladies and gentlemen, back in the days, there were no watches or cell phones to tell time. They would use sundials. Yes, correct, we have two. Number one, above the archway, the big square block with black stripes and numbers. This one here was used for 
off in side. And the second one, right to the far side in the center. That one right there was used for morning time. However, it was uh, night time, rainy, or even overcast. They would place a guard on duty. He would use an hourglass. That poor guy, he never slept, okay? Again, to the very far side on top, the small tower. It's called the captain's tower. It used to be one of the lookout points. And number two, for 150 years, <coughs> that very small tower was the tallest building in Cape Town. Nothing was taller. In front of that building, there's a beautiful green statue of a lady. Well, it's a bronze statue. She was known as the Lady of Good Hope. If a soldier were injured or sick, she would nurse them back to health. Then, by the request of the soldiers in 1989, Marcel Hoffman erected that beautiful bronze statue in memory of her. What is really sad though, the proper location for that statue should be on the outside. This is Cape Town. You leave a bronze statue on the outside, you go on lunch, you get back after lunch, she went on lunch, be keeping her safely right there. These four statues right in front of us, it's four different kings of four different tribes. They were placed there, being honored for their part that they played in South African history, fighting whoever wanted to invade the space. To the front, on top, behind the two white statues, the bell tower. Now the bell itself, it's the oldest working bell in South Africa, cast in Amsterdam in the year 1697 by a man called Claude Frenny. Many used for three reasons. One, to tell time. Two, in case of any attacks. Three, if very important, people should arrive. The two white statues, left side called Neptune, right side called Mercury, and that was their good luck charm. Gods of the sea and gods of the trade. Next, the color yellow on the inside was painted to lessen or to dampen the sunlight inside the fort. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all the rocks and all the slates they needed to build this entire fort was collected from the quarries of Robin Island and Signal Hill. But all the wood came all the way from Hout Bay. Very lastly, the first, the oldest corner boat, the one to the far left front. That is called the Lear Down. Then, clockwise, the one to the right, Buren, to the side, Katzen and Bochen. At the back, we have Nesso. And the last one, it's called Oranje. So all of these names given after the five main titles of William, the third, he was the ruler of Orange in the Netherlands. Later too, he also became the King of England. 1689, he died. 1702. Any questions? Can I beg again, please? Okay, if there are no questions, ladies and gentlemen, do not forget. The main museum, second, and the military museum. As we go on our tour, I will also point out the grain cellar as well as the prison cells, okay, that we can do after our tour. Please be very, very careful of all that evenness on the flooring, okay? So kindly, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen.